Saint Augustine commentary on the Gospel of John chapter 13 following verse 6 to 10 continued In what way the church should fear to defile her feet while proceeding on her way to Christ have not been unmindful of my debt and acknowledge that the time of payment has now come May he give me wherewith to pay, as he gave me cause to incur the debt. For he has given me the love of which it is said, O oh, no man anything but to love one another. Romans 13 verse 8 May he give also the word which I feel myself owing to those I love. I put off your expectations till now for this reason, that I might explain as I could how it is we come to Christ along the ground, when we are commanded rather to seek the things which are above, not the things which are upon the earth. Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 For Christ is sitting above at the right hand of the Father, but he is assuredly here also, and for that reason said also to Saul, as he was raging on the earth, Why do you persecute me? Acts 9.4 But the topic on which we were speaking and which led to our entering on this inquiry was our Lord's washing his disciples' feet after the disciples themselves had already been washed and needed not save to wash their feet. And we there saw it to be understood that a man is indeed wholly washed in baptism, but while thereafter he lives in this present world, and with the feet of his human passion treats on this earth, that is, in his life intercourse with others, he contracts enough to call forth the prayer, Forgive us our doubt, our debts. Matthew 6.12 And thus from this also is he cleansed by him who washed his disciples' feet and ceases not to make intercession for us. And here occurred the words of the church in the Song of Songs when she says, I have washed my feet, how shall I defy them? When she wished to go and open to that being fairer in form than the sons of men. Psalm 45 verse 2 Who had come to her and knocked and asked her to open to him. This gave rise to a question which we were unwilling to compress into the narrow limits of the time, and therefore deferred till now, in what sense the church, when on her way to Christ, may be afraid of defiling her feet, which she had washed in the baptism of Christ. For thus she speaks, I sleep, but my heart wakes. It is the voice of my beloved that knocks at the gate. And then he also says, Open to me, my sister, my nearest, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is filled with dew and my hair with the drops of the night. And she replies, I have put off my dress, how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defy them? Song of Songs, chapter two, verse, chapter five, verse two and three. O oh, wonderful sacramental symbol, O oh, lofty mystery! Does she then fear to defile her feet in coming to him who washed the feet of his disciples? Her fear is genuine, for it is the, along the earth she has to come to him who is still on earth because refusing to leave his own, who are stationed here. Is it not he that says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world? 
Matthew 28, verse 20. Is it not he that says, You shall see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man? John 1, 51. If they ascend to him because he is above, how do they descend to him but because he is also here? Therefore says the church, I have washed my feet, how shall I defy them? She says so even in the case of those who, purified from all dross, can say, I desire to depart and to be with Christ, nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Philippians 1, verse 23 and 24 she says it in those who preach Christ and open to him the door, that he may dwell by faith in the hearts of men. Ephesians 3.17 In such she says it, when they deliberate whether to undertake such a ministry, for which they do not consider themselves qualified, so as to discharge, so as to dis discharge it blamelessly, and so as not, after preaching to others, themselves to become castaways. 1 Corinthians 9.27 For it is safer to hear than to preach the truth. For in the hearing, humility is preserved, but when it is preached, it is scarcely possible for any man to hinder the entrance of some small measure of boasting whereby the feet at least are defiled. Therefore, as the Apostle James says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. James 1.19 As it is also said by, an un, by another man of God, you will make me to hear joy and gladness, and the bones you have humbled will rejoice. Psalms Psalm 51 verse 8 This is what I said, when the truth is heard, humility is preserved. And another says, but the friend of the bridegroom stands and hears him and rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. John 3.29 Let us rejoice in the hearing that comes from the noiseless speaking of the truth within us. For although, when the sound is outwardly uttered, as by one that reads, or proclaims, or preaches, or disputes, or commands, or comforts, or exhorts, or even by one that sings or accompanies his voice on an instrument, those who do so may fear to defile their feet when they aim at pleasing men with a secretly active desire of human applause. Yet the one who hears such with a willing and pious mind has no room for self-gratulation in the labors of others and, and with no self-inflation but with the joy of humility rejoices because of the Master's words of truth. Accordingly, in those who hear with willingness and humility and spend a tranquil life in sweet and wholesome studies, the Holy Church will take delight and may say, I sleep and my heart wakes. And what is this, I sleep and my heart wakes? But just I sit down quietly to listen. My leisure is not laid out in nourishing slothfulness, but in acquiring wisdom. I sleep and my heart wakes. I am still and see that you are the Lord. Psalm 46, verse 10. For the wisdom of the scribe comes by opportunity of leisure, and he that has little business shall become wise. Ecclesiasticus 38, verse 24. I sleep and my heart wakes, I rest from troublesome business, and my mind turns it, its attention to divine concerns or communications. 
but why the church finds delightful repose in those who thus sweetly and humbly sit at her feet, here is one who knocks and says, Why at what I tell you in darkness that speak you in light, and what you hear in the ear that preach you upon the housetops. Matthew 10.27 it is his voice then that knocks at the gate and says, Open to me, my sister, my neighbor, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. As if he had said, You are at leisure and the door is closed against me. You are caring for the leisure of the few and through abounding iniquity the love of many is waxing cold. Matthew twenty four twelve. The night he speaks of its iniquity, but his dew and drops are those who wax cold and fall away, and make the head of Christ to wax cold, that is, the love of God to fail. For the bread of Christ is God. 1 Corinthians 11, 3 But they are born and his locks, that is, their presence is tolerated in the visible sacraments, while their senses never take hold of the internal realities. He knocks, therefore, to shake off this quiet from his inactive saints and cries, Open to me, you who through my blood are become my sister, through my drawing nigh, my neighbor, through my spirit, my dove, through my word, which you have fully learned in your leisure, my perfect one. Open to me, go and preach me to others. For how shall I get in to those who have shut their door against me without someone to open? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans 10.14